My mission is to testify of Jesus Christ. I know that he lives. Thank you to YouTube for that awesome intro clip. We'll start with the definition of a seer stone, which is a special stone used for seeing visions and aiding translation. And Joseph had a few seer stones. Two we know of are the brown stone and the white stone. In 1833, Willard Chase said that he was with Joseph Smith when they dug his well on his family property, and that after they had dug 20 feet deep, he found a curious stone. He showed it to Joseph, who placed the stone in his hat and quickly discovered that it was a seer stone. Now that was the brown stone, and Wilfred Woodruff, in an account, recalls Joseph traveling near Buffalo, New York, by Lake Erie to obtain a white egg-shaped stone, which was the white stone. Some critics of the church have viewed Joseph being involved with seer stones and divining rods as grounds to accuse him of acting contrary to the commandment in the Bible, which says, There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. But Joseph and his family did not view folk magic or the use of seer stones as falling under biblical condemnation. It is clear that Joseph and his contemporaries believed that one could gain knowledge from such activities as dousing, or using a rod to find water, ore, or buried treasure, and the use of the seer stones. This does not mean, however, that Joseph understood such activities to be a form of magic. Some critics have also accused Joseph of money digging, looking for buried treasure, and claimed that it was dishonorable, but this was a common and accepted practice at the time. We even find in 1825 in the Wayne Sentinel in Palmyra a report that buried treasure had been found by the help of a mineral stone, which becomes transparent when placed in a hat and the light excluded by the face of him who looks into it. The origins of this folk belief tradition are European and reach back at least into the Middle Ages. Quartz crystals or other stones could be used to find missing objects or to see other things not visible to the natural eye. This practice accompanied European immigrants to North America and was part of Joseph Smith's cultural environment in western New York in the 1820s, though by then the practice was waning. Now let's talk a little bit about the translation experience for Joseph and what he might have actually seen while he was working through the seer stones. He would put the seer stone in a hat and look into it, blocking out all the light and perhaps seeing something like this. <laughs> Just kidding, but Joseph Knight Sr., a family friend, recalled that after Smith put the Urim and Thummim into his hat and darkened his eyes, a sentence would appear in bright Roman letters, then he would tell the writer, and he would write it, then that would go away, and the next sentence would come on, and so on. But if it was not spelt right, it would not go away till it was right, so we see it was marvelous. In another account, decades after the translation work, David Whitmer, one of the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon, writes that on the spiritual light of the seer stone, a piece of something resembling parchment would appear, and on that appeared the writing. One character at a time would appear, and under it was the interpretation in English. In another account, recorded by the Shakers in late 1830, Oliver Cowdery explained the process of translation as the engraving being unintelligible to learned and unlearned. There is said to have been in the box with the plates, two transparent stones in the form of spectacles, through which the translator looked on the engraving and afterwards put his face into a hat, and the interpretation then flowed into his mind, which he uttered to the amanuensis who wrote it down. So some Mormon historians have argued that Joseph Smith used his seer stones as a crutch before he was able to receive revelation directly from God by inspiration without a device to help him. By implication, even though God apparently sanctioned seer stones, they were described as cultural tools, essentially prophetic training wheels. This didactic model addresses Joseph Smith's money-digging experiences by admitting that he used his seer stones in a cultural way to find buried treasure, then used the same cultural process to learn how to receive revelation from God. The use of such seer stones or seeing devices dates back to scriptural times, such as with the Urim and Thummim. One theory even suggests that the Liahona was a type of seer stone. 
The Liahona had two spindles, one that would point toward food in the desert and another that would point toward the way out of the wilderness. Additionally, like the Nephite interpreters, the Liahona provided the prophet with revelation from the Lord through words that would appear and disappear upon the device. And as mentioned earlier, similar to the use of the Liahona, Joseph Knight and David Whitmer claimed that words would appear on Joseph's seer stone and then disappear after he had dictated the words to a scribe. Furthermore, just as the Liahona functioned by faith and righteousness, so did the seer stones Joseph used to translate the Book of Mormon. Now, there is some controversy even in the church about the role of the seer stones in translation. Some saints who struggle with the idea of a seer stone have played with the idea that perhaps God worked through Joseph's belief in the seer stone to facilitate revelation and that the stone itself wasn't important. However, this conflicts with the instance where Martin Harris replaces the seer stone while Joseph is out of the room. And when Joseph comes back to resume translating, he finds that the stone no longer works. He is relieved of his confusion only after Martin confesses that he has replaced the stone. This implies that the stone must have been necessary in some way, at least at first. In one story, Harris claimed that he hid a pin in a haystack and that Joseph found it immediately, without even looking in the hay, by gazing at his seer stone in his hat while reaching his hand into the hay to extract the pin. So we see that seer stones were incredibly useful and mysterious tools offered by God to his prophet Joseph Smith, along with Biblical and Book of Mormon prophets. We just covered the history, some facts, and ideas about seer stones, and I'd like to end with my testimony that I know Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, that he translated the Book of Mormon and other sacred texts by divine authorization and power. Thanks for watching, and as Brother Sweat says, God bless as you continue to learn about the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thank you.